Hello Muffins. Um, today Buster and I are going to talk you through a key scene from the film Spies. The scene we're going to talk about is the seppuku or suicide of Dr. Masamoto or we can call him Dr. M. Um, the reason that we're doing um, this particular scene is because Fritz Lang Spies is an example of a film coming at the end of the German Expressionist era. So the the film is not as expressionist as his other films, such as Metropolis. Um, he saves these moments of German expressionism for when we go into subjective filmmaking, when we go into people's heads and we can experience their thoughts and feelings. Um, the feelings of Dr. Masmota in this scene are of guilt. Ooh, Buster's going to, yeah, here he goes. As soon as I start talking every time. Um, feelings of guilt, paranoia, um, betrayal, which um, link neatly contextually with the feelings of society in Germany as a whole in this era. So um, German expressionist scenes are selectively used by Fritz Lang and Spies and they're used for moments of extreme emotion. Okay, so when we go to a, a character that's in an extreme emotional state, um, Fritz Lang will use some of the tools in his uh, German Expressionist toolkit. Let's have a look at this little scene. Okay. So in the previous... Oh, there it was... So in a previous scene, Dr. M has said to Agent 326 that nothing should deter a man from his duty, not even a woman. But he was seduced by the Russians, by Kitty. Um, and he did a, a valiant job of trying to rebuff her advances for a good 20 minutes of the film. But he finally gave in. And here we go. So um, we have this um, over the... Um, bird's eye view shot looking down on him ish as um, as he wakes and um, we're going to see some subjective filmmaking and German expressionist techniques when he realizes that Kitty has betrayed him and stolen the treaty to M played by uh, Lupo Pick who I think was Romanian not Japanese Okay, the empty space where Kitty should be. I find his movement here quite robotic, um, like a soldier. The camera tilts up there following his movement, a point of view shot. Okay, so I know these things seem to us we're quite advanced um, spectators of film, but this idea of like the point of view shot and then going into the subjectivity, that would have been um, quite interesting and groundbreaking for the era. Um, so this is our first signal that we're about to enter into subjective filmmaking and using a lot of expressionist techniques, the good old point of view shot. Here we have an unchained camera. The camera as he realises what's going to, he's going to turn to the camera in a moment. But you, the subtlety here of the camera movement pushing in on him for that fully dramatic close up, um, that moment of realisation is really very, very interesting. And camera movement in this era would have been called an unchained camera. turns the realization theatrical performance turning to camera and we have the uh, double exposure the overlay of the Japanese flag that sunburst perfectly framing his face so we start now to enter into subjective filmmaking For, we, we see his thoughts now so his thoughts immediately go to his country and what has happened and that's where we see the flag Remember, we do not talk about music or sound. So, 
straight into some more subjective filmmaking and every time we go in to his mind it becomes more and more distorted fragmented those are the two words that we like in this section remember distortion fragmentation and we can see here very clever use of mise-en-scene to um, connote his state of mind they've painted copies of the treaty onto the backdrop there and we can see, remember, these were the three couriers that took three fake documents to Japan. They were decoys. He had the real one all along. So he sentenced these men to death. And we can see here through the costume that they've all had um, some very uh, brutal deaths. We have um, we have a noose, round number one. Number two, I don't know if that's blood or water. And uh, number three, there's a gunshot wound in his chest. So they are all dead. And also, if you look at their eyes, you can see that their their eyes have been painted over um, their eyelids in traditional in traditional style, and it gives them a really ghoulish sort of look. So this is where his mind goes to the the documents connoting the betrayal, and then his accountability here for the death of these three men. And the treaty rains from the sky. And they they hand it back to him. He told them that anyone who does not deliver this treaty is not worthy of being called a Japanese. So that is the that is the level of importance he's levied on them and himself. He has not managed to deliver the treaty. Therefore, he is no longer worthy. And look, we can see inside his mind, we have the flag again. He's right in the middle of that sunburst, um, painted onto the walls. The treaty is raining from the sky. We're back in his office, um, but it's done in a kind of like distorted, angular kind of way. And they are elevated above him in terms of the proxemics of this shot. These three couriers now have an elevated position over him. We have a cutaway now. Oh, not quite yet, sorry. So I always find this a little bit confusing. This kind of temple is in his mind, is in his house. Difficult to really say. I think it's in his mind. I think this is where he's going to in his mind. I think that he is committing seppuku in his house but in his mind he is here and this this shot here coming up we the audience are now in the position of the the buddha looking down on him here he's wearing traditional um costume this rubbing of the hands is a plea for forgiveness Again, no dialogue, no chapter cards in this scene to tell us um, what's happening. This is pure cinema telling us the action with the visuals. Storytelling just with visuals, not with sound. Again, so the director here is doesn't show us the, the grotesque nature of the suicide. It's kind of a symbolic... Um, thing we see a reaction shot of his face. We don't see anything grotesque, but as we can see, we can see the process, and we can see the actor there, his mouth moving where the knife is going. So we get the idea from that motion. <clears throat> so yeah, no blood, but we have the cascading robes here. We could give an illusion. Reading. Now, what I think is interesting here is it cuts to Haggy. Um, they've done this before at the beginning, um, where the um, the government official says who's responsible. And then it cuts to Haggy, and he just goes, 
ich. Um, again, we have that idea, who is responsible, cuts to Haggy. And what he's got there with the string of pearls, it's parallel to the point in the frame where um, Dr. M cut himself along. So it's as if he's holding like the entrails, the guts, I always think of the pearls slipping through his fingers in a place on the frame parallel to where Dr. M was cutting himself all across the scene. So these pearls are symbolic of his um, Dr. M's death. And we can see here within the mise en scene we have the modernity of the office and these trappings of luxury. Look, they're eating cham eating champagne, drinking champagne here. And there we go, there's Kitty. Um, in terms of costume and performance, she is this um careless female character and she bites the pearls to check to see if they are real you know she is she she just wants um riches she does not have any ideals unlike sonia oh, she's a wrong one so who is to blame those two and then it cuts back and we're in that position of authority looking down on and we have the incense filling the room, flying away, um, like his soul. And then is that a smile? Is that a grimace? We don't know there on Dr. M at the end. <clears throat> so I hope that rundown has given you a few things to think about for the analysis of the Dr. M scene from Spies. Okay, muffins, remember that's not everything. There will be more in your notes. Hopefully there were just a few reminders in there. When you're talking about German expressionism, remember it's the artistic shaping of reality. So um, the reality in this scene is Dr. Masamoto's reality. We're going into his mind and we have distortion, fragmentation. His, you know, he feels betrayed and broken and we see that played out on this scene. Okay, <clears throat> thank you so much. <coughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, muffins.